Braun, Braun. Everybody ready to witness what's about to take place tonight. Lakers taking on the Sixers, a battle of two of the best teams in the NBA. Oh, and by the way, uh, LeBron's about to set another record, about to pass Kobe Bryant on the all-time scoring list, moving into number three. And the all-star starters were named this past week in the Western Conference. You just saw LeBron James along with his teammate, Anthony Davis, the beard, Luca the Don, and ha, 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 Kawhi Leonard. Complete the five in the West. In the Eastern Conference, the process, the Greek freak, Spicy P, Kemba, and Trey TL. The Greek freak is the captain for the Eastern Conference for this year's All Stars. Now, obviously, the starters were named. We see a lot of players that made it that are on winning teams. There's one player who doesn't happen to be on a winning team. Shouts out to Trey Young, who's putting up excellent numbers. So, anyway, I, I didn't want to sway your conversation anyway. <laughs> However, I'll just go ahead and put the question out there. Is, is there. Are there any players that you see that maybe should have made the starting lineup for the All-Star team? Obviously, um, Jimmy Butler should have made the starting lineup. It's, it's not even close what he's done for the league and his body of work throughout his career to this season having a heat potentially messing up some hopeful NBA final matchups is tremendous for that organization and the heat are back. You're back in D. Wes, what do you see when you see this Eastern starting lineup? No, I agree. You see the top of the East represented in the starters with the exception of the Miami Heat. And Jimmy Butler has been the best player on the second best team in the Eastern Conference to this point. He deserves to be on that starting unit. Now, we're not trying to pile on Trey Young. I think he's an amazing player. I definitely think that he should be an all-star. There's just been some eyebrows raised because his team isn't necessarily in the best situation on the floor as far as winning games. So, Earl, you see, he's, he's been an electric player. I mean, he's one of the top scorers in the league, tops in assistant as well. Obviously an all-star, but, I mean, what are our thoughts on Trey Young right now at this point in his career? He's, he's magnificently dominant. He plays well. He's a elite point guard. And, you, and to Trey's defense, he... He's not on a team that's supposed to win. So it's not like he's underachieving with win shares. He's just doing the best he can under, you know, the, with the talent he has around him that's, that's young and eventually he's going to grow. No, it's a challenge with the young team. Trey is a Hall of Fame level offensive player, but it's fair. He has to improve on the defensive end of the floor. You can watch it. You can see it in the numbers. But every young player has things they need to improve. For Trey, that's his area that he needs to continue to improve. But this all-star conversation, I think, is like conflated because this is really about how we're able to classify and vote because Jimmy Butler is classified as a forward. If he's classified as a guard, he's in. He is a starter in the all-star game. I thought, I thought basketball was positionless. I thought it was, too. In fact, Com <laughs> Commissioner Silver, I know you have people watching. I mean, for next season, can we just eliminate positions altogether and just have a vote just straight up and see who the best players are? Because as Earl said, it's positionless basketball. That's what we're doing here in 2020. Hey, of course, positionless. You, you, don't have a you don't have a traditional point guard. If you do, he needs to be able to score. You don't have center is the kind of like that position that starts the game but fades throughout the game. Definitely doesn't finish the game. So it's positionless basketball, and I think – if we have positionless basketball, we should be able to vote positionless. Well, we're going to see it because Rudy Gobert is going to tell us if the big man is out of the game. <laughs> and Nikola Jokic is going to tell us if the big man is out of the game. And it's going to be fascinating because Dwight Howard and JaVale McGee have been great for the Lakers. But when it comes down to it, at the end, is AD playing five? And LeBron's playing four, and they're getting skill on the court, and they're going to shift down, and that'll challenge Jokic, and that'll challenge Gobert. We're going to find out. I don't think the big man might is truly out of the game the way we think it is. Big man definitely isn't extinct. You talked about find out. We're about to find out your reserves for the Eastern Conference. We have these two gentlemen right here, and here is the list. As you can see, Earl and Wes are the names, and that are their selections beneath their names. One difference. Earl has Derrick Rose. Wes has Bradley Beal for the rest of the list. It's all consistent. Go ahead, speak your piece on why Derrick Rose is an all-star. It's only rightfully so. He's putting in the work, and the 20-plus games consecutively is magnificent. And it's D. Rose. You know, he has a chance to get his team into the playoffs, which the Pistons are kind of like on that bubble team. And he's just great. First off, amazing for him to come back. To Chicago where he's from that would be an awesome return story yeah awesome return story go back to Chicago and he's overcome so many injuries no doubt about it I mean you just said it 
what, 11 straight games, scoring 20 points, the most that he's ever done in his career, which is awesome. He didn't even do that during his MVP season. On the other hand, you have Bradley Beal, who's a perennial all-star. Of course, the team is not necessarily playing well, but his level of play has still remained the same. This is where it's always challenging, right? Just like we talked about with Trey Young, when the team is not performing, but, but you have a player that is playing at an elite level like Bradley Beal is playing, it's hard to knock him. And the other part of this with Bradley Beal is we've seen him do it in the playoffs before. So we know that he can be an elite player on a winning team. And he's done that. It's just, you know, it, it's a time of transition because of significant injury for the Washington Wizards. Well, time to transition to the Western Conference. Here's a list of elite players from each gentleman as well. We listen uh, again. Everything seems to be consistent except Brandon Ingram for West, Devin Booker for Earl. So why is Brandon Ingram more deserving of Devin Booker? I don't know that he is. <laughs> and this was really, really hard. After I picked Brandon Ingram yesterday for game time, I go home and I'm like, man, I should have picked Devin Booker. Uh, <laughs> so, no, 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 no. Brandon Ingram, though, most improved player, candidate, 25 points a game, up from 18. His numbers are up across the board. New Orleans has been playing great with the exception of these last couple games. That's why I gave it to Brandon Ingram. Now, now obviously, I mean, we just got to go ahead and put it out there for those who aren't educated. Obviously, you worked close with Devin Booker, where it was his coach at one time. So you, you're very familiar. So you might be slightly biased. However, I'm tell us tell us why he should be a reserve. I'm definitely Booker biased, but he's been doing it for a long time. He's been through it, doing it consecutively for year after year after year. And it's his opportunity. He plays within that system. He could get out the system and average as many points as he chooses to. He's being very efficient. He's leading that team, and they have a chance to make the playoffs. They still have an outside shot out there in the Valley of the Sun. I mean, hey, listen, I, it, it's a tough call right there. Who do you got? Oh, man. Between those you put, two. You put me on the spot. I really like what Brandon Ingram has been able to do. Like I said, he's only had a handful of games where he hadn't scored 20 points. However, I mean, when you're looking at the body of work, who's who might be more deserving? I mean, I think Booker has the slight edge. I mean, he's been doing it for a very long time. With his fifth season, he's averaged over 20 in all five seasons. Uh, I think Russ coming on late and Chris Paul getting OKC to the level kind of made that debate very controversial, like who is that last spot? Because rightfully so, they have pushed their way into the reserves. Can't wait to see either way. You're going to find out on Thursday the reserves revealed exclusively on TNT. You don't want to miss it. We're definitely going to have some fun with it. Time to look at some basketball. Hold up what we got going on in Minnesota. Wes, what's popping? These jerseys are horrible. <laughs> That's what's popping. Hey, hey, hey. Josh says, you know what? I don't care what you think. I'm about to take it down the lane. More Kyrie Irving. He is a talented player, isn't he? Oh, Larry Ooh. Bird. Oh, man. His prayer was answered. And we've been talking about him all night. He's a pretty big deal, just in case you didn't know. He wears number 23 in your program. He's number one in the heart of many Lakers fans, unless they're, they're Kobe stands. But he's going to pass Kobe tonight to move to number three on the all-time scoring list. Earl, you just talked about Westbrook. Oh, he's crazy. Hawthorne. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I don't know what that